We now know that there are planets orbiting other stars besides our own, but it's generally very difficult to see these planets directly given their stars are a billion times brighter than them. So to discover them, we have to try measure their effect on their star. In this video, we're going to see different ways to use the effect of gravity. The idea is simple. We're used to thinking of planets being pulled around by the gravity of their star, but remember, gravity acts both ways. The star also gets pulled by the planet. So even though we're used to thinking that the planet orbits the star, that's only approximately true. Actually what happens is, both the star and the planet orbit the centre of mass of the system. So if we see the star wobbling around like this, we can conclude that there is a planet there. But we can actually learn a lot more about this planet if we watch its stars wobble carefully. Remember that both the planet and the star orbit the centre of mass, so if the planet is here, the star must be on the other side, or else this isn't the centre. Then you see the star takes exactly the same amount of time to do a full orbit as the planet does. So, if you can measure the star's period, it tells you the planets. But then you can use Kepler's laws to find out how far away the planet is from the centre. There's one other piece of information that the star's movement reveals about the planet. Suppose this planet is very heavy, then the centre of mass will be a bit closer to it, which means the radius of the star's orbit is bigger. Another way to think of this is, the radius is bigger, but it still takes the same amount of time to complete an orbit, so the star must be going faster. So if we can either directly measure the radius, or if we could measure the speed of the star, then we'd know about the mass of the planet. So basically, the two things we're interested in measuring about the star are the period of time it takes to complete an orbit, and either the radius of that orbit or the speed of the star as it goes around. There are two ways to get this information. The most obvious way is to precisely measure where the star is over time, which lets you observe the period and radius of the wobble directly. This is called astrometry. But think about how difficult that can be. The star doesn't generally move very much, and if that's compounded by the star being far away, it can be very hard to directly see the star moving at all. That's why the second method, called the Doppler method, isn't about measuring the star's position, but its velocity. Think about it like this. When the star is over here, it's moving towards us. But that means the light coming from it is a bit blue shifted. On the other hand, when it's on this side, it's moving away from us now, so it's red shifted. So if we keep measuring how shifted the light is, we can figure out when the star has done a full orbit. So, just like the astrometry method, that gives us the period of the planet. Now to figure out the mass, remember the faster the star is moving, the heavier the planet must be. But if the star is going fast, then this blue and red shift is bigger, so we can work out its speed from that. Then, in theory, we can get the same information from the Doppler shift data as the astrometry data. But in practice, Doppler shifts can be measured to way more accuracy. In fact, with this method, we would be able to detect if the star was going at walking speed. But there is a limitation with the Doppler method. Imagine if, instead of being side-on, the star moved like this. Now the star is never moving away from us or towards us, so its light is not blue or red shifted, and so we can't tell that it's moving at all. Measuring Doppler shifts only tells us the component of the velocity in our direction. That can lead us to underestimate the mass of the planet, or in the worst case, we won't be able to tell that there is a planet there at all. So that's how the astrometry and Doppler methods work and their pros and cons. I said that both methods let you estimate the planet's radius and mass, but I only gave you an outline of how to do that. If you're interested in testing yourself, figure out how you do it from the raw data.